good morning uh good afternoon and good evening wherever you are joining us from once again i want to extend a very very warm welcome to this live streaming and this sunday service where again we dig deeper in the word of god to understand more about the hidden things of god so that he, um, we understand and we become uh, the children who God wants us to be. So um, it is a privilege that he, I share the word of God again to you. Um, I want to thank God for allowing us once again to um, reach out to you through the word of God. And uh, I want to um, honor all the protocols. And I really want to... Um, to pray to to ask God today that he, the word can help us um, because if the word does not help us then there's no point um, even to hear it. The Bible says whoever hears the word and does not put into practice is like a, a foolish builder. So I pray that we are not foolish builders but we are you know wise builders who build the uh, their house on the foundation of um, the rock so that when the heavy wind and rain comes the house will still stand so that's what exactly the bible says that he, um you know if you hear the word of god and put it into practice you are like such so you are like the, a wise builder who will build the house on the foundation of a rock and when heavy winds and heavy rains comes the house will still stand you know so when we hear the word of god and put it into practice we are like we are building our faith and we are continuing to you know, to build our understanding of God and uh, the mysteries of the kingdom of God so that, he, you know, when uh, when it's all said and done, um, you know, we will be able to be acknowledged by Jesus in front of his father to say, this is my child. So that's the, re the whole reason why we are uh, doing all these uh, teachings so that it can shape us to be the, the children who God want, wants us to be. Um, it's it, you know there are certain things which which needs ourselves as people to use that which God has given us uh, the senses and everything else which God has given us to be able to uh, align ourselves with what God actually teaches and with actually what God says to us. I go back again to the Word of God, which he, when God was um, uh, was talking to to Joshua, he says, "Be courageous." So or be determined. So those things which God was asking him to do, God was never going to make him courageous. God was never going to make him determined. He himself as a person had to. So that's exactly why we are going through this series of teachings so that we build ourselves. There are certain things which we need to understand. Um, we, we prepare ourselves so that we can then get to a, a level where we are able to be compatible with the word of God. You see, God can speak, but as long as we don't understand, it means that he just speaks and that he, the word he speaks, he just goes like that without any, any, anyone implementing it. So we're going to have to prepare our hearts, prepare ourselves and prepare for, for the word so that the word will actually help us. So preparation is very, very important. And again, I go back to the word of God in the book of Matthew when um, um, when when John the Baptist started preaching the word of God. Uh, I like particularly where he preached the word of God. He says, um, "Repent," you know. And when you look into the Amplified Bible, it actually says, "Change your your, your thinking, change your thought, the way you think." Why? Because at that particular time, God was going to manifest in a different way. From the way they understood him because even Jesus when he came uh, he started preaching in the synagogues which were the temples or, or, or the places or where people would worship God but he started uh, pre preaching the word of God of repentance in the church or in the synagogue or in the uh, in, in the uh, within the uh, within the Christian groups but they, by that time obviously the, 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 the word Christian was not there because Christ had not was not there yet uh, because the word Christian only came when actually Jesus Christ was, was actually there when he had left. So <clears throat> he, John the Baptist, preached the word of God 
of repentance. Jesus as well as he came, he, he preached the word of, of repentance. But he was teaching the word of repentance amongst the people who were already worshipping God at the time. But I like the word of God from uh, when, when John the Baptist was preaching the word of God and they talk about changing, changing the, the way of thinking or changing the thinking in the book of Amplified. Why? Because they would not have accepted Jesus if they had not prepared themselves for the coming of Jesus. That's what is very, very important. So preparation is always key and is always very important. So um, John the Baptist preached about the coming of Jesus Christ. But he was preparing for people for the coming of Jesus Christ. So that when he comes, Jesus Christ, when he, he comes, people would accept and they would understand. And, and they, they would then, you know, accept him as the king of kings and lord of lords. But because they, some of them, they didn't accept him. That's why they actually, you know, um, nailed Jesus at the cross. And actually when you read the Bible, you understand that they were actually rushing to do the, the job and finish it in time of the Sabbath. But what they didn't understand that they were crucifying the king of the Sabbath, Jesus Christ. Do you understand? So, so preparation is very important. Um, it, it, it prepares you for the time to come so that when the time comes, you understand events and you understand what you're supposed to be doing. So what these people were supposed to do, we're supposed to listen to what John the Baptist was actually talking about, about you know, the one who was going to come, the one he says, he was not even um, worthy to untie his sandals, you see. So they did not accept uh, the teaching. They did not accept, you know, the preaching of John the Baptist. So therefore, when Jesus Christ came, they were clueless. They didn't know who Jesus was. So whatever it is he then said did not make sense to them. And they actually thought that he, was, he had come, uh, you know, um, to, to be the worldly leader for them to take the power away from them. You see, so they didn't change the way they are thinking is, a, is according to what G, uh, John the Baptist says. He had said, change your thought, change the way you think. So it's very important we prepare every time we prepare. Um, we prepare, so when we prepare, then it helps us then to be able to, um, to be able to even to make a difference, even in challenging situations, even in this time we are living in. If we, if we are prepared enough, if we are prepared enough, we wouldn't be crying much because we know that Jesus is, is in control. God is in control. The Lord is in control. So it's very, very important. So I, once again, I want to um, just uh, welcome you and congratulate you that you have just joined us. But uh, I have just give a, a, given a, a brief explanation why we teach these teachings because it prepares us. Um, for example, if I... If we just say uh, Jesus is the Lord, we need to come come to Him. Yes, we we can come to 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 Jesus. But here is the thing: if we have not prepared in ourselves enough to surrender unto Him, you see, we can only do so much. And uh, after a certain level, we are we, we are probably discouraged. And after finding that you know we are still facing challenges, we we start to re retreat. Or, or, or moving back to move back so the things we are teaching is to prepare our hearts and our minds and our st so that we can be strengthened enough to be the children who will stand we withstand whatever it is the uh, the world may bring um that will persevere and will continue to worship god no matter what it is that we we go through so preparation is very very important uh that as a you, you build a character uh, within yourself so that you are able to withstand and you are able to be wise you are able to uh, to know when to move and when not to move it's very very important so today we want to talk about a very uh, important word but as we continue to go through the series about um, which, which are actually the series which is linked to the theme of this year where Joshua declared in front of people he says as for me and my household, we shall worship God. And, uh, um, but we're now moving into understanding that uh, you know, there's, a, there's a way um, we need to worship this God. Because actually, Joshua said to the people that you may not be able to worship this God because it's a holy God. So which meant that they, they had to understand that. And they had to prepare themselves to be able to worship this God 
which Joshua uh, had actually worshipped throughout his life, and he had actually, um, you know, led Joshua to defeat, you know, so many other nations and to move into the promised land, and God actually giving the land as he had actually promised. You see, so, but he, in his analysis, he says, it, you may not be able to worship this God. And he went on to say, you need to go and remove other gods, uh, the other gods you have. Because he knew very well that these people were relying on other gods. And uh, he says to them, you need to go there and remove other gods and pledge your loyalty unto God. You see? So all these things, when you now want to relate it to our day-to-day -day life, it, the word of God becomes so, so much alive because that's exactly what's happening at the moment. And um, we may have, we may not have other physical gods, but actually we may have other, other things which may be replacing our God. Therefore, as long as we do not understand that we have to um, throw away these gods, it means that you may not be able to worship this God. Why? Because it's a jealous God. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, you, the Lord God is one. Yeah? You, you are supposed to worship God with all your heart, your strength, and your soul. So which means 100%. God wants 100% commitment. Um, that's why even in the Bible, always, our forefathers will always remind us, do not forget what God spoken to you, spoken to you about. Do not forget. It means that what is important is to understand what God has said and to maintain that. Because as long as we don't have a foundation, we'll build, build something which is not strong. But as long as we have foundation, uh, our, our, our faith becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And we are able to conquer um, whatever it is that comes our way. So really, uh, it's, it is such a uh, privilege that we, we share the word of God so that he, it can strengthen us for the few people who may accept it and, and, and put into practice. That may really change our life in terms of our understanding of our God and our focus and what we should actually be doing. And what I always want to remember or remind people is that wherever you are and wherever uh, we have seen in the word, please just try your life that as you live your life, you live your life is according to what God instructs. So in other words, your, your worship has to be biblical. You have to relate to what actually God says in the Bible. Why is it important? It's important because um, there are certain cultures which, which will start to cultivate within ourselves or within the groups we meet, uh, which actually have nothing to do with the Word of God. And when we try to, to find out where does this fit in within the word of God, maybe we don't see it. So my point and my reminder and my encouragement is that we have to be biblical and understand. Yes, you may have uh, heard this or, or that, whatever, but understand what God says. Because everything shall pass, but the word shall remain. That's what is very, very important. When everything is said and done, God will ask, actually judge us according to what we have done, whether it's good or bad, and according to what he has actually done actually according to what he's actually said himself so it's very very important remember the bible in the book of ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 18 the bible says the conclusion of the matter is that we need to worship god and keep his commands that's the whole reason why human beings were created by god and actually i always want to remember the, uh, to remind this that the book of ecclesiastes was written when you read it you understand because the person who was being referred and person actually who was the character in the book uh, had managed to accumulate whatever it is that he wanted in life many cattle many houses precious stones whatever money you you name it he had it but he he, he says it's all vanity he says it's all, all vanity that's why he then says in conclusion you know um in conclusion what he realized is that everyone has to worship God and keep his commands. That's the whole reason why uh, God created human beings. So it's very, very important. So once again, um, we are moving on with, the, with, with, this, um, um, with this same theme. So we are looking into what are the things 
which can help us to worship God in the way we want, we, we, in the way which God himself wants. So we, we looked at understanding God himself. So I'm repeating so that at least we, we move forward um, together. We need to understand who God is. We need to understand the power dynamics, to understand that he is the most powerful being you can think of. In relationship with you, you need to know that he, he is above you and you are the one who has to be following. We looked at to understand who, what kind of a person you should be, and we we realized that the Bible actually says, "Do not, uh, do not forget that you are your body is the temple of Christ." So which means you yourself. You have to present in a way that Christ may be able to live in you. So we looked at God Himself, who He is, how powerful He is, and that He created heaven and earth and everything in it. And that he is the one who is in control. So we looked at your, yourself as a person. You are the one who needs to realize and recognize that it is God who is in control of your life. Now, if he is in control, it means that we need to listen to what he says and put that into practice. One, things we, one of the things which we looked at was, so what kind of a person should you be? And we looked at humbleness. And when we look at humbleness, we look at, you know, looking into if someone is said to be humble, it means that he, he does not look at himself as someone who knows everything, but he accepts other perspectives. And when we looked at it, we looked at the word humble came from the word Latin word humilis, which is next to the ground. So it means you're not looking at yourself as someone who is high up there and know everything, but you look at yourself, you know, in a lowly way, but be able to un understand and accept, you know, other views. In relationship to God, what we realize is that, so when you are always humble before God, it means that you always let God speak, and then you follow. You always let God make a step, then you also make a step. You always let uh, God speak something, something in your life. And when we looked at the fact that, you know, sometimes when we lack humbleness, it means then that we don't follow, we are not able to follow what God is actually saying. And when we're not able to follow what God's saying, we get ourselves into all so much, pro so much problems. So we looked at the book of Judges, when people were no longer listening to what God was saying, what we looked at, that they were now, God was now, was now against them. So in other words, whatever battle they, were, they move or, or they, they engage the same, themselves into, they were now being defeated hands down every time. Why? Because they had left God's ways. Why? Because they're not humble enough to listen to what God was saying and what God had actually said to them. So that, that's where we are, and today now we are going to be moving on. But it's very important that we take these things into practice and just try to put them into practice because they are, it, 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 that's what actually the Bible says. The children of God started rejecting God as soon as uh, Joshua had left. They, now, now, they are now not accepting God. The generations which came, they were now not, not, not accepting God. Whatever God said, they did do their own way. And God was now against them. But remember, he was the same God who was for them all the time and who fight for them. But because now they had lost God, God had, had departed away from them because they had not listened to what God was saying. Now, whatever battle they engaged themselves in, they were defeated. So we understood that, that you know, the, the, when, we, when we lack humbleness, sometimes we, we take things that we know, um, even when God says something, we don't listen, we don't, we're not worried about what God is saying, we're just worried about ourselves and what we think is right. The lack of humbleness, very, very important in someone who worships God. So today we are going to move on now. Now we're going to move on, today we're going to talk about surrendering. Because then uh, it's very important that when we, when we engage with God, um, we have the ability to surrender. Very, very important ability to surrender, to surrender. Uh, why is it important? It's important because um, you're going to have to let God take control. But for God to take control, the only thing you would have done, you would have surrendered yourself and let God take control. So what we found with children of Israel was that they were not able to surrender themselves to God. 
But we also need to look into uh, what surrendering means. So surrendering, in my own thinking, in my own uh, reading, in my understanding, is that like some when you when when you when you give like what you have, you give it to someone, whether you are forced or whether you give it willingly. So you surrender yourself. So that's surrendering. Today we're gonna focus on surrendering. But what I understand and what I know for certain, it's very difficult for you to be able to surrender when you are someone who is even not humble. Maybe you can only surrender when you're forced to surrender, when you lack humbleness. But if, when you, when you uh, have got humbleness within yourself, you can think and see and see what is the benefit of surrendering and you actually go ahead and surrender. So we're gonna read the Bible to see what the Bible actually says. So surrendering is very important. Why is it important? Like I said, it helps us then to be able to follow Jesus, to follow God. Because you cannot follow God if you cannot surrender yourself unto him. You have to give yourself up your, your control. Uh, sometimes what you want to do, you know, the Apostle Paul says, the gospel I am a slave to. So it means that he became a slave to the gospel. He became like a, a, a servant to. He became a gospel I am a servant of. So he became a servant of. Most of the time, what I understand is that a servant um, is not greater than, greater than his master. A servant follows what the master say. So a servant uh, does not dictate for the, for the master. It is the master who, who dictates um, and, and who tells the servant or the slave what to do because he is the one who is in control. So now, so when you, when, when you are not able to, to surrender unto God, so in the, in the brief description I have given, here is the thing, what you need to understand. Sometimes we surrender unto God because we are just in a situation which I don't have an alternative. That surrendering is not good enough because when you have got an alternative, you are going to go back and start taking control of your own self. But when you surrender because you have, you have chosen to surrender even when there is an option, that's the surrender which God wants because you are now surrendering that God take control of my life, which is very important because that's where, where we lose it because we, we want to take control. We want to tell God what to do. We want, uh, that, we want this job. So I will tell God that that's the job I want. We, we are not asking God what kind of a job should I have. On our last Sunday, on, on our last cell group on, on, on Friday, I believe, see the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 19, uh, verse 21, the Bible actually says, many plans are in, in a man's mind, but God's plan is the one which will prevail. So which means we can plan, whatever it is, we can plan, we can do whatever. And we can plan everything, but God's plan is the one which prevails. So it's very important, the issue of surrendering, to be able to surrender. So surrender, a surrender, I said, it's about giving up something which actually is yours. Um, so whether it's by force or whether, you know, you choose to do it. In our surrender ourselves most of the time, we surrender unto God when you know that I am bedridden. I can't do anything anymore. I am sick. I am now calling unto God. I surrender. That's not the surrender I'm talking about today. And that's not the, the type of surrender I want you to have. I want you here to have chosen to surrender unto God. So you choose to surrender. God, I surrender unto you. I come with my life and I surrender unto you. God is now you who is now take, taking control of my life. Tell me, God, the time I should move. Tell me, God, the time I should stop. God, be my light. As you direct me, God, let me follow. That's the kind of surrendering I want you to have in your life. Why is it important? It's important because then, you see, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, what we're talking about, where the Bible says the uh, uh, many, many plans in our are in, many, in a man's mind, 
but it's God's plan which prevails. It means that we have got uh, we plan so many things and we want to do so so many things. But we never give God a chance what you what he himself wants to do in our life. So what we need to do is to surrender unto God so that he can lead you into the life he wants you to lead. Very important. Very, very important. So is the ability to surrender. So we're going to talk about surrender today. So we're going to read the Bible from the book of Galatians. Um, remember, we are moving with this series where we want to understand how we can be able to worship God in the way He wants, how we can be able to do things in the way which God wants. So we talked about humbleness. And humbleness leads us to be able to surrender in the way which God wants. Not to surrender unto God because I don't have an op uh, alternative. Not to surrender unto God because I am in bed sick and I, I, I can't handle it. But to surrender into God, in, in, in God, even when you have choice to do other things. So we want to read the Bible in the book of um, in Galatians. Very, very important. So Galatians chapter number 2. Um, So verse 20, the Bible says, uh, so chapter 2, verse 20, the Bible says, So that it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. This life that I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. Very important. I'll repeat uh, so that it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. This life that I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Now, When you, we, you read the Bible, you understand that uh, even in baptism, we die together with Christ. Then we, uh, the symbol, symbol of actually, you know, being baptized, we, 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 are, we are dying together with Christ. We are rising together with Christ, that Christ is now living in us. But even if we do it physically, as in this is the baptism we are going through, but sometimes we are not able even still to be able to let Christ take control of our life even if we've done that but we still want to take control of our life so now when we surrender unto god you see um we are surrendering unto the one who knows our life inside out and who know even what we don't know and who know even our future which we don't even think about we don't even know but he is the one who knows so surrendering is, is, is important that when you surrender unto God, when you really truly surrender unto God, when you accept God or accept Jesus as your personal Savior, it means that he is the one who is now living in you. Remember again, the Bible says, the Bible says, you know, remember the, your body is the temple. Don't you know that the, your body is the temple of, of, of Christ or temple of God? Now, Christ can only live in the temple when the temple is ready for him to leave, come and live. God can depart the temple if the temple is not good enough. When, when the temple is being used for something else, God will depart. But the Bible says, when you, Jesus says, when you keep my commands, myself and my father, myself and my father, remember, myself and my father will come and dwell in you. And again, remember, it says, don't, don't you know that your temple, your, your body is the temple of God? So the word of God is consistent. It never conflicts. It's consistent. Whatever he has said will remain. So meaning that we ourselves, once, once we have given ourselves to God, Remember, we, we want to find out how can we worship this God. Because Joshua declared to the people that you may not be able 
to worship this God. So we want to find out how we can be able to worship this God. We can, open, we can worship this God only when we are able to surrender unto him. Otherwise, the Bible actually says, they say, Lord, Lord, with, with, their, uh, with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So which means we can still say the words, but our hearts to God will be saying something different. But when we surrender wholly unto God, it means um, whatever it is we are doing is congruent. We, we say, Lord, and God actually say, thing, sees that with our hearts we are actually saying, Lord. And we are saying, Lord, we love you. God will see our hearts and actually say, see that, ah, these people actually love me. Why? Because of what we do. Why? Because that we are able to surrender unto him. Not to surrender because I am in a situation which is unbearable, but surrendering that you choose to surrender. Because even if you are in a situation which is not bearable, once you get into a situation which is bearable, you may still start to do your own thing again. Get me right. I'm not saying that to worship God when you are, when you are in a critical position, it's not, it's not good. It is good. But my point, my preference is that you love God and give him time even when all things are okay. When you are able to wake up and everything is fine, still give glory to God. Do not only give glory to God and call him at the time when you are only suffering. That's my word. So surrendering, the ability to surrender, sometimes it calls for someone who is humble to surrender themselves even when things are okay. Because sometimes... One thing I have learned in human beings, most, there, there are quite a few people who want to tell you that they don't know something. Everyone wants to, to say that they, they, know, they, know, they know quite a lot. But to, have, be humble, someone, to be humble sometimes is to, to is to give God the position he deserves in your life. You know, and actually I accept that some of these things, I, I, you know, God, I, I, don't, I, I put everything unto you. Because for me, I'm a limited human being. I'm, I'm a limited as a human being. But I'm asking God, because I have surrendered unto you, God, help me. Now, in our lives today, we need to learn to follow God. We need to learn to surrender God. The Bible, in the book of Numbers, chapter, chapter 9, that was a time where God wanted to lead the children of Israel. But uh, every time... They had to be aware of what, what's happening. They had to be aware of what actually God is saying. Because the Bible says during the day, he would lead them with a cloud. And then when the cloud is moving, they would also break the camp and move forward. And when the cloud settles, they will settle and camp, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the place they were, they will camp and wait for God's instruction. And the Bible says during the night, there was like a pillar of fire which would lead the, the children of Israel. So when the fire moves, then they knew that God wanted them to move. And then they will move. When the fire settles or when the cloud settles, whatever time of the day, it meant that they would settle as well. And even if they had to settle for one year, two years, six months, one day, they still had just to follow what God was actually saying to them. Why? Because God was the one who was in control. And they, they themselves had surrendered them unto God that you are the one who is in taking control of our life. In this day and age, have you surrendered yourself unto God. Maybe when you are really want to be honest unto you, to yourself before God, you may not have. Because at that time, whatever it is they were doing, they had to stop because God was now moving. And they will move even in the middle of the night at one o'clock. If the pillar started or the pillar of fire started to move forward, they would they would break the camp and start to move forward. Why? Because that's the perfect time. Where God wanted the, when God wanted them to move. You see, and even when someone had whatever it is project you are actually doing at that time in that desert, I don't know whether they were projects, I don't know, but my point is, whatever it is they were doing, they would stop and, they, and they let God take control. They will move forward. 
why they had mastered how to surrender before God. They had no option. They had no any other option where they, they will do whatever it is they want. Why? Because they had accepted, they had known that it is God who has taken us this far. But here's the point and here's the problem today in the day we live, the, 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 this uh, uh, day and age we are living. We have stopped understanding that God is the one who has taken us this far. Even in this challenging situation where people, thousands and thousands of people are dying, and you, God, keep you alive. The understanding of knowing that it is God who has kept me alive, so I need to follow what God is saying, sometimes it doesn't come into mind. It's very important that we need to understand this. Very, very important. So when you surrender unto God, when you give yourself unto God, it doesn't matter whatever it is that God says you need to be doing. You do it because you have surrendered yourself unto God. The Bible says, it is I, uh, it is now God, it is now Jesus who now live in me. It's not I who live, but it is now Jesus who is now living in me. So meaning that Jesus is now taking control. You have surrendered unto Jesus yourself. Whatever it is that you do, you let Jesus take control. How do you let Jesus take control? I have always this, say this, let Jesus be your number one. Let God be your number one priority of the day. Start your day by Jesus. Start your day by reading the scriptures. Understand what God wants to speak to you. I don't know the other people who were so fortunate to God speak to them through, through whatever it is or dream or whatever. But why don't you follow what God is actually saying? It's very, very important. So the ability to surrender is very important. More so when you surrender, not because you don't have an option, but to surrender because you have mastered and understood that God is the one who's in control. And God is the, the life you live can just end any time, today, tomorrow, whatever. It can end. But the ability to, to understand that the one who gives me the life is the one who should be in control. The surrendering of, to this God is very key. But sometimes it cannot happen when we th still think that we are very capable, we are very, we are very important people. We are, when you, st you, you, start to, you, you look yourself at uh, someone who, who is uh, of high esteem before God. No. Humble yourself before God. <laughs> he himself is the one who will lift you up. That's very important. So um, what we are talking about today is the ability to surrender. So when we uh, are able to surrender unto God, in the way even the children of Israel were able to surrender, although I don't know whether they, they had an option, I'm sure they had an option, and I'm sure they were all, all people who were not listening to God at that time, where God was saying, you know, this time to move, and they, they were not moving. It meant that, uh, you know, uh, God, they were falling out of God's protection. That is exactly what happens today, where, you know, when God says this, and we stop to follow what God is saying, it means that we are now doing um, our own thing and God is not involved. So when we surrender unto God, God starts to live in us. When we surrender unto Jesus, Jesus starts to live in us. That's why the Bible in the book of Galatians says, it's not I who now lives, but it is God now who lives. You know, I now live this life by faith, which means that now, you know, you see, faith, it means that you, you, you just see, um, you don't look at facts, but you look at the faith because you are, you are not looking at uh, the sight, but you're looking at the actual uh, believing and the actual faith. So it's very, very important. Now, the Bible says to, I, I want, always want to repeat this because that's the foundation. That's, that, that's what helps us to understand. We pray, we say, God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Isaac. But Abraham, the Bible says, the, re the Bible reading which we read in the book of uh, Genesis, I believe chapter, um, chapter, chapter 12, I believe, where, where, where God spoke to, um, to, to uh, where God actually spoke to, um, to, Joshua, to, uh, to Abraham. It's very important. It's very important. You see, um, when we believe God, that he is our shield. When we believe God that he 
is our great reward. When we believe that our God is the one who is in control, it will help us so much in terms of following. Because faith, we can only have faith when we believe. We can't have faith when we don't believe. So you believe that God is in control. You believe that God is the one who's talking to me. You believe that God is the one who is saying. You believe. You believe. Then you, you, you. St things will start to. Because the, the faith talks about, you know, uh, believing something that it, it is happened when it is not happened. So when God was speaking to Abraham that he, he was his great, great reward. See, God had not, he had not rewarded him yet. <laughs> he was. He, there was early, early stages where God was speaking to um, was speaking to, to Abraham. He had not, had not done quite a lot. He had done something, but not quite a lot. So he had to have the faith to understand that what I, actually what, whatever God is telling me, that's, that's the truth. You are God, God was actually talking to, to um, Abraham, saying that you I am your, your great reward. I am your shield. So he was t totally telling him not to be afraid. So even ourselves as well, we should surrender unto God and believe and know that God is our shield and God is our great reward. And that's the reason why even we should actually surrender unto him. Because truly he is the one who is in, in control of our life. Even when God was speaking to Abraham, the Bible says, you know, leave the place where you are to a place I am going to show you. The I am going to show you part is the part which, uh, which Abraham had to be faithful about, to have faith to say, God is going to show me a greater place. God is going to show me a place which is good for me. God is going to show me a place which he himself know is good for me. There are many times when we do not surrender unto God because you think that what I'm doing is right. So we have to surrender unto God knowing that whatever it is we are doing before God, I mean, for us may be good, but before God may not be good. So when we surrender unto God, we give God a chance to show us the best he has prepared for us. When we surrender unto God, we show God the best which he has, way which he has actually prepared for us. So when we surrender unto God, we start to live a life which God has prepared for us. So, as you can now understand, we now know that when we surrender ourselves unto God, it's not a sign of weakness. You know, when you surrender in your war, of course it may be a sign of weakness. When you surrender yourself unto other things, yes, it will be a sign of weakness. But let me say, when you surrender unto God, it is not a sign of weakness. When you are humble before God, even before people, it's not a sign of weakness. Because many people think that when people are humble, they are, they are weak in a way. They are not weak, but actually, they actually are exhibiting a, a, a very, very critical characteristic. To be humble is critical. It's very, very important. important. Because if you are not able to be humble, it means that you are always there and you are always ignorant and you are always uh, proud and you are always uh, holding yourself in high esteem. Maybe you're not even not worth it. So it's very important that we humble ourselves before God so that we are then able to surrender ourselves before God so that we let Jesus, the Son of God, live in us. He can only live in us when we have made, when we really have made a conscious decision to surrender our life before God. Now, when we surrender ourselves before God, when Jesus is now living in me, whatever it is that comes, it does not see us as people or it does not attack us as, attack us as people. Jesus himself will be the one who is present in our life, we will be actually ourselves be hidden in Christ. So our life will be hidden in Christ. Whatever it is that we face, we are not going to face that head on 
but Jesus is going to face that whatever it is that we are going to face. My brethren, the ability to surrender before God is a very key principle when we want to follow God. When we are able to surrender ourselves before God, even when we are not sick, even when we are not unwell, even when we are not facing any challenge, when we choose or when we make a conscious decision to surrender ourselves before God. That will open doors which we cannot even imagine. Why I say that? I say that because you are now moving according to what God says. Your life becomes much more important even for God because the plan you are living or well, the life you are living is according to the plan of God. My brethren, there's nothing much more important in life than living a life which God himself has set before you. But that can only happen when we have the ability to surrender our life before you. I surrender unto you, my God. That's your prayer today. I surrender unto you, my Lord Jesus. I give my life wholly unto you. That it is not me who live anymore, but it is I. It is you, God, who is now who now live in me. Whatever challenge you face, whatever situation you face, whatever it is that you face in the world right now, whatever it is uh, uh, you 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 face as a person, once you surrender unto God, uh, He takes control of, of such things. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. So once the Lord is your shepherd, once the Lord lives in you, you are not afraid of facing challenges or situations. Why? Because you know it is God who is going to take care of those situations and things. Let this word bring, be, uh, bring something into your life. Let your life be controlled by Jesus Christ. You know, when Jesus wants you to, um, to do certain things, it's not for his benefit, but it's always for your benefit. When Jesus lives in you, it may, he makes the burden so much lighter. When Jesus now dwells in you, the burden you face on a daily basis becomes lighter. Now, when Jesus lives in you, you are joyful. It's not the material things which make you joyful, but the fact that Jesus lives in you, the joy will overflow. Why? Because it is him who lives in you. Be joyful, he says in his word. And I repeat, be joyful. Now pray that you are able to surrender before God. Once you surrender before God, once Jesus lives in you, truly it won't be you who's living. It will be Jesus. Even in any challenging situation, you'll still be smiling. Even in whatever it is that you face, you'll still be joyful. Even whatever it is that you come across as a person, you'll still be joyful. Do not, that, that's why the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it, it says that you have your mind transformed. It says, do not conform to the standards of this world. So once Jesus lives in you, once the, the Lord now dwells in you, you are not dependent on the, you know, you know, on the, on the standard of this world. Because even when things are challenging, you are still smiling. When things are not going the way you want, you're still joyful. When whatever it is that you didn't get the job you wanted, you, you say, God, it was not for me because you have surrendered yourself unto God. So you still live a fulfilling life not dependent on how much you have in the bank, not dependent on how, how many things you have, but depending on the fact that Jesus actually lives in you. My brethren, today I'm, I've said to, to teach you about the importance of surrendering unto God. Knowing that God, when he is taking control of you, it means that actually it is not God, it is not yourself who is living, but actually God is now living in you. So people will start to see the glory 
of Jesus in you. People start to see the God in you because he actually lives, you actually believing in you. That's the importance of surrendering. You surrender yourself, your life. And he himself, God, will start to live in you. You start to be happy even when <laughs> situations are challenging. Why? Because God will be living in you. You are living according to the plan of God. And you are starting to understand the plan of God in your life. Whether things are good, whether things are bad, you still glorify God. Why? Because you have made a conscious decision to surrender yourself unto God. Not that you are being forced to surrender unto God, but because you have made that conscious decision. Whether things are favorable, whether things are not favorable, whether things are good, whether things are not good. But you have really made a conscious decision to say, Lord, live in my life. And Lord, continue to control my life. And that, I think, my brethren, I think that's, that, that's, the, that's, that's what we have to aim for. That's what we have to aim for. Because when you live what life, uh, the life of God which God has given you, it means whatever it is that uh, uh, people may say, whatever it is that you, you may face, whatever it is that the challenges you may face, but you still know your relationship with God, that God is allowing me to go in this situation. God wants to teach me something. By the time you move out of that situation, you have learned lots of things and that will have built your character as a person before God. And uh, I wanted to um, say to you as you listen to me, Day, that when you are worshiping God, when you are a child of God, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the problems are gone. But God may get you in certain situations and wants to see how you stand, or want to build your character, or want to improve you, your, your faith unto him. The glory of Jesus was only found when Shaldek, Mishik, and Abednego were actually thrown into the, in, in the fire. And Jesus started to appear, and the glory of God was witnessed at that time, even prior to the coming physically of the Son of God in, on the earth. But So my point is, the glory of God can be witnessed when you yourself have suffered so much, or have gone through a certain situation, but at the end, people will start to praise God because of your situation. Why? Because the glory of God would have been seen in that particular situation. So actually, you know, um, the people at that time when the uh, and the were thrown into the fire, people then realized that he, the God, these people worship, is a true God and a powerful, powerful God. So the glory of God went, the people started to understand that, you know, glorifying God because of the situation which was quite adverse for these people. You know, so my, my point I am saying to you, Church of God today, or children of God, is that let your situation glorify God. That can only happen when you have made a conscious decision to surrender your life unto God. Now, once you surrender your life unto God, you don't resist certain things. Once you surrender unto God, we don't resist what God is saying. Once you surrender unto God, you don't resist His power. You don't resist... His guide. You don't resist anything. You are now following because you, you have surrendered your life unto God. It is my prayer that you start to prepare yourself to surrender unto God. I know it's something which you cannot just do right away because it's not, it's not going to be possible. But it's something which you build yourself understanding. So these teachings will build you to get you to that level where you start to understand. Because remember, all these things we are talking about, they need you yourself as a person. Um, and they don't need God. Sometimes we, we pray to God, not God, please help me to stop gossiping. No, just stop gossiping. When you start to, to start, when you, f when you stop talking other, about other people, you have stopped gossiping. So it, mean, it needs you yourself as a person. So my point is, sometimes we, we need to prepare ourselves so that God will start to use us in a, in, a, in a powerful way. So that's my way today. And I, I continue, and I want you to, to really, really uh, take this seriously. Because many people, they say they worship God, but they're not able to surrender unto God. Many people, they say they want to surrender unto God, but physically they have not made a conscious decision to surrender unto God. When you surrender unto God, He, God Himself, 
is the one who will start to take control. When you start to take control, then that scripture come into come alive. The scripture which says, It's not I who live, but it is Christ who now live in me. That scripture will suddenly come alive because you would, Christ will actually be now living in you. That's my way today. And I want you to, to really understand that. And I want you to, to know that. So, so, so in other words, what you do, you, you, you shape your life. You build your life. You, you look at what are the things which are stopping me from surrendering. Certainly being proud is one of them. Certainly being able to, to say that I know everything. Because when you know everything, then God is not going to do anything. Because you know already. You see, so, but when you humble yourself before God to say, God, do something in my life. I need to understand myself. I need to understand, uh, I need to have that self-awareness to understand where I'm going wrong, to understand where I need to improve, to understand where I need to learn. When people start learning and stop learning, that's where the problem is. Because when you stop learning, you're actually saying that you know everything. But yet, the Bible talks about having your mind renewed on a daily basis. How can your, 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 your mind be renewed on a daily basis when you stop understanding and stop God teaching you something? It's not going to happen. So it can only happen when you um, give unto God to, 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 to teach you something, to renew your mind every day, to, renew, to learn every day. So when you learn every day, it means that you, 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 you grow every day. And it means that you, you learn new things every day. And you start to do what is right. You cannot be a Christian when you are not able to change. Because change is very important. It's a big subject. You have to be able to change. It's a big transition to let Jesus start to take control in your life. Because for your whole life, you have been taking control of your life. So for you to, to allow Jesus to take control of your life, it really takes something. You need to really to, to say to yourself, I, I want to make a decision that Jesus will take control of my life. It means that he, maybe when you want to do something, <laughs> you start to ask Jesus. You start to pray. You start to, you know, you start to allow Jesus to take control of your life. And that's very, very important. So change is very, very important. And many people are not able to change. But so we can, when you can't change, it means that God cannot use you. God says to Abraham, move from the place you are to a place I am going to show you. It means that a big change. A transition had to happen. Jesus, I mean, I mean uh, Abraham had to change. He had to change his environment. He had to change you know, things which he used to rely on. He had to change to start to rely on God. So the ability to change is very, very important. And that's why I gave you an example where I was saying to you that uh, when Jesus was coming, um, you know, John the Baptist had to, to, to preach to, to the people so that they can have a change of mindset. So very, very important. So we cannot surrender unto God until or unless if we have made a conscious decision to change. Because all the decisions you were making, say, I want to do this, I want to do that, you are now letting God take control. It's a big decision. It's a big decision. It's a big uh, ask to say, let, let someone take control of everything. Let God take control of, uh, of everything. But it's important that it happens. And actually, it's very, very important because once you, if you are going through with the teachings, you, 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 you understand because then the Bible, you, what you understand is the, is, the, is the power dynamics. You understand that he is greater than you. So if he's greater than you and he's, he knows what, he, um, what your life is all about from the beginning to the end, he's the one who knows. So once you know those things, that will also help you to make that decision for God to take control of your life. Because listen, to be honest and to be truthful, most of the things which make us resist to change is the fear of the unknown. So you fear, you think that, you know, I, my life is going to do, I am going to, you know, God is telling me to do this, so how, how am I going to survive? Like, like Abraham was going to say, how am I going to survive? How am I going to tell my, my family? How am I going to, you see, so you fear those things. But when you prepare yourself and when you make the conscious decision, you have to confront your fear and make that decision to surrender unto God and he will take control.
So my word today was really to um, encourage you, my brethren, um, as we continue to build the understanding of the word of God and understanding of how we can worship this God, which Joshua had said to the children of Israel that it may not be possible for you to worship this God. So we are breaking the ground, we are breaking the boundaries, we are breaking the barriers so that we are able to worship this God. So today we've been talking about surrendering. Many people may not be able to surrender because they are not able to humble themselves. I gave you an example that people sometimes they surrender only because they don't have any choice. But the surrender, surrendering I'm talking about today, I really want you to emphasize on, is that when you are able to make a decision, when you are even well, when you're not even in hospital, when you're not feeling any, any sickness, make a conscious decision to surrender yourself before God. And then when you surrender yourself before God, when he's now taking control, he will start to live in you and controlling you. The book of Galatians said, it's not I who live, but Jesus Christ is now living in me. I now walk by faith, not by sight in this world, in this time I live. So that's my way today to encourage the brethren, to encourage you to make, uh, to ponder about this word and to meditate upon this word. And most importantly, to take action about this word. Because it's a very, uh, it's a word which really needs you to really take an action. What action? Action is to surrender yourself before God. So that's my way today. May God bless you. Uh, can you, do we, we ask you to join us again next week where we continue to um, reveal the mysteries of the word of God and concentrate really on the application of the word of God. That's what is very, very important. Um, so continue to invite friends, share with friends um, so that uh, this word we have heard, you can also hear with your friends and then invite your friends and relatives also to hear the word of God. We are here to empower the word of God. It's not about church, but it's about empowering the people so that they can be able to worship God in the way which God wants. Surrendering is key in the process of worshiping God. May God bless you. Uh, may you join again us, with us uh, next, uh, um, next week. So we thank you very much for your listening. May God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.